Buenos dias, students. Today is a very special week as we are making our very own pinatas. And the reason we're doing it today is because we are getting ready to celebrate none other than Cinco de Seis in our house. Some of you might be familiar with Cinco de Mayo, but we have our very own holiday that we've created. And much to my children's embarrassment, I will explain it to you during class today. All right, I will show you, let's see. First thing <clears throat> you're gonna do is you're gonna trace this template. Hopefully your table is bigger than mine. So I've already gone ahead and traced this. You didn't have to watch me trace. But I would recommend, you can see that. See how I've traced these right next to each other? And then I've also drawn in the strips that we're gonna have that will hold those two pieces together. These are three inch strips. That way I'm utilizing this paper the best. I have had people trace one here and then trace one here and then they didn't have enough to make the little strips to hold them together. So think about placement. All right, so I will cut these out. And while we're cutting, I will tell you about this glorious holiday. It is one of my favorites. So several years ago, our family was in a at-home Bible study with some other families and we were, this is probably 10 years ago, we were going to be meeting. Um, it was, I think, the end of April, and we were going to be meeting the next time was going to be on May 6th. And I said, oh, we should all bring Mexican food and I'll decorate because it's going to be Cinco de Seis, the day after Cinco de Mayo. And so we should have a big, fun fiesta party because who doesn't love a good theme? And everybody in the room did kind of a slow head turn and looked at me and they're like, Cinco de Seis. I'm like, yeah, Cinco de Seis, the day after Cinco de Mayo, right? And the Hispanic girl in the room went, do you want us to come at five to six? And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about um, or what that has to do with anything. <clears throat> anyway, after I explained myself multiple times, uh, it turns out that I don't speak Spanish and that there is no such thing as Cinco de Seis because that just literally means five to six. So, seis de mayo would be the 6th of May. So there you go, stay in school kids, take your Spanish. So, but um, just to be funny, I made a banner and we celebrated it anyway, much to my kids' horror. I put the banner up every year and I make Mexican food and I put on a sombrero and we celebrate Cinco de Seis and they think it's literally the dumbest thing they've ever heard of and they're completely humiliated. So, makes it all the better. So anyway, that is what we do in our house and it's super fun. So I highly encourage you to make up your own holidays because uh, you can. All right, so I'm cutting this little guy out and then I will cut out the other one and get them as matchy as possible. Otherwise, your little guy will be kind of lopsided and wonky. Okay, so here's my first one. So this is just a flat piece of paper. And then, so that will be one side. I need to cut out the other side. All right, so now we've got our two little guys front and back. And we're gonna cut out three inch strips. You could cut out, um, two inch or four inch, however, basically however wide you want him to be is how wide you would cut the strips. I do three inch because it's kind of a nice general thickness on it. And if you go too small, then it can be harder to manipulate. So I just took my handy dandy ruler and I measured out at the three mark and the six mark and just made little dashes along and then I connected them all as I laid the ruler out and just drew a line. So I had two three inch strips. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this out. I believe this is 28 inches long approximately and you're gonna need around 30, I don't know, anywhere from 30 to 33 inches depending on how much you overlap this as you tape it down. So this will be more than enough with these two strips, but better to have more than not enough. And then you'll have some of this left, and if you want, you can make another pinata in another shape. So basically, I'm losing stuff. 
Uh, basically any, you can make any kind of pinata. So you could do the donkey, you could do like a big, you could do two circles and do it around and do like a big smiley face or an emoji. You could do unicorn, ice cream cone. Uh, if you're really creative, you could do some sort of like a Star Wars uh, Millennium Falcon or something like that. So basically any shape, whatever you can, okay. Whatever shape that you can, wow, everything just fell, draw. Um, you just need two of them, and then you need the strips to attach them in between. I think I gave you guys long strips of this. Basically, what I do is I just tear it and I stick it somewhere, like back of a chair or the edge of a table. Don't stick it to a tablecloth because it will never come off. Um, and I get a bunch of just little tiny strips ready because it makes it go quite a bit faster if you have pre-cut. Okay, so we'll start with this just so we can get going. The flat areas are the easiest areas to do. When you round it, it tends to want to pop up so it is a little harder. So what I recommend, there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side. So it doesn't really matter because tape is gonna stick to either. So you don't need to worry about that. So what I would do here um, is, you might need to cut this into more manageable strips since this is really long. I would start on his back because it's a nice flat area to start with. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna just line it up so they meet. You don't wanna hang it over like that, but you're just gonna line them up so they exactly meet like this. And then you're gonna put a little piece of tape there. So let's put a piece of tape like that. And then I'm just gonna, this way, come in like that. Make sure it's all lined up perfectly. And then I'm gonna push the tape down like that. So now it's attached. Like so and I'm gonna put one more piece on there to secure it so it doesn't move around quite so much there we go actually maybe a third while we're at it okay so you can see that that's attached now and then where's my other guy okay so we have our other guy, and we're literally gonna line him up. Let's see if I can do this hard to, I should have the camera overhead. We're going to lay this flat and line him up like that. You see that? So I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'll put a piece of tape here. Actually, let's do two or three pieces, and then as long as we line it up correctly, okay, just like that and make sure you get it facing the right direction. All right. So, so many things on the table. All right. You may not be able to see while I'm setting this down because I wanna make sure I get it in the right spot. And if you can have zero gap, that's got over too far darn okay so this will be easier when you're doing it on a table and not trying to hold it up for a camera so no worries right there okay ta-da see that now they're like two little attached horses and literally, you're gonna do that all the way around the entire thing. So, it's sort of wonky when it's curving like this, but if you just keep attaching, and I would say this is about how far apart you wanna have your strips. So, whatever that is, quarter inch, half inch maybe. Um, especially going around corners, you actually want more because it's curved, it's gonna to wanna to pop up a little bit. So, then I'm gonna take this, Curve it around like so. So now it's attached there. Oh, whoops. 
We don't want this tape to flip over and attach to the wrong piece of paper. And what? There we go. Oh. Okay, so this is what you don't want. See how this piece is sticking up more? And on this one, it's perfect. So I need to undo that and make sure that this guy is not sticking above here. As you get to these spots where you're gonna make a hard line where his feet are, what you can do is you can tape it all the way down to his feet. Actually, let me do that first. So tape it all the way down so it's nice and flush. And then to get a clean uh, line going on the bottom of his feet so it's not curvy, what I would do, if you have a ruler, is, hopefully you can see this, I'm going to stick the ruler right at the bottom of his feet on the table here, like so, and then I'm just going to bend this up, like that, and crease it. See how I crease that now? And so now... I'll crease it back this way. Now that it's got a crease in it, it's going to lay a lot flatter. And I want it to be really flat because that's the part that's going to be sitting. And you don't actually have to put any of the um, decorative stuff on the bottle. It'll literally just be sitting on that part right there. So now it will sit flat. And then you can even do the same thing here. So I made another crease with the ruler or any anything flat a flat edge of any kind will do that okay so now if you can see I've got those two creases there and so as I come around that's gonna lay a lot flatter and then I can it's gonna go ahead and crease up like that and become his feet so does that make sense hopefully um, and then I'm just gonna keep taping it and then you can just keep creasing it as you go in these like curves that are going like that. Um, and you're gonna go all the way around. I'm not gonna go all the way around for the sake of time because it's gonna get really boring, but that is how you get a, these nice straight lines is by putting creases in here. And if you really wanted to be on it, you could measure out and measure where the creases are before you started attaching it. Um, that would be another way to do it. So. So this is what it looks like when it's all taped up. You've got just a nice blank little taped up donkey. Now, if you want to be able to put candy in here, which why would you want to do that, right? Of course you do. That's the funnest part. Um, you can cut out, I'm going to draw it on here. Tell I'm really good at measuring. So you can cut out. So I have a little spot where I can put candy now. You can put the candy in or wait and cover it, but it would make more sense to put the candy in now. So, although do you really want to hit this cute little guy after you work so hard on him? Think about that. Okay, so I'm going to put this one down here. Your final step is going to be making your fringe and gluing it on. So, I've given you a bunch of multicolored tissue paper. And, actually, let me hold this up so you can see. So, if you can see here, I've cut this into about one inch strips and then just fringed it, which you basically go with your scissors all the way down the strip of tissue that you've cut and then glue it on. Easy peasy, but I'm going to show you. Okay, fold it over about an inch if you want it to be super uniform. Grab a ruler and measure. Uh, that's centimeters. There we go. You can measure in centimeters if you prefer. Okay, so this is just over an inch, like an inch and a quarter. I think it's probably optimum 
doesn't matter. You can have it be an inch, you can have it be an inch and a half. With a smaller little guy like this, you don't obviously want three inch fringe because he's tiny and so it wouldn't really fit very well. But on a giant project, you would do bigger fringe. Okay, so I basically fold that over. Then I'm gonna cut it out. Try and get your cut even across so that your fringe is even. Okay, so now I have like a, what would that be? Two and a half inch piece or so, and it's folded in half. So the fold side is, you're not gonna cut on the fold side. You're gonna cut on the open side. And you're gonna cut not all the way up, or you will, okay, here's what not to do. It's gone. <laughs> so don't cut it off, because then you only have one piece of fringe, and gluing this on piece by piece, you don't wanna do that. So you're gonna want to, everything is easier when you lay it flat. In the air, uh, I feel like I'm gonna, as an accident. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up this is tiny fringe. You can cut it whatever thickness you like. I think because he's a little guy and this is a pretty small piece, you want to cut it fairly thin. And if you can cut it up to about the same spot, then it will be uniform. But fringe is pretty forgiving. Okay, so if you can see, I've made fringe now. I would leave, what is that, about a quarter of an inch untouched at the top. So I will show you, if you open it, that's what it looks like. So you've got that spot, and that's the part you're gonna be gluing down to him. And if you cut up too high, then um, it's gonna be harder to glue, and you're gonna risk the fringe uh, coming off and cutting right through the whole thing. So I'm going to measure, you can start anywhere, I mean on the bottom, but you can start on either leg. Um, so I would go here, measure all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to need that much. So I'm going to cut it right here. Okay, so that's my piece that goes around one leg. And I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to put it a thin line. You don't need a ton because you're basically gluing paper to paper, which glues pretty well. And then put the lid back on. See if I can do this without getting glue on me. Okay. So now I've got my glue on there. That's probably a little much. And I'm gonna stick that on there, press it down, try and keep it even all the way around, like so. Oh, I got glue on me. Okay, ta da! Isn't that cute? And then we're gonna do the other leg. So I would recommend doing both sections whoa, of yellow. Let's see if this fits. This would be lovely if this fits all the way around. Oh, guys. <gasps> it's like I planned that. Okay, so I actually will finish fringing this so I can show you. Ta-da! So now, I'm gonna grab another color. Um, did you read? Okay, same thing. With obviously, I would have fringed the entire thing, but with the next piece, you want to overlap it. But there, he has no more legs, so you're going to start wherever you want to start. I'll start here. And I don't want to completely cover it, but then I don't want to have it be separate layers. I want it to overlap a little bit, so maybe halfway. My fringe is acting up. And then what I would do with this piece, I would put it like that, I would glue it, 
and I would just glue it all the way around. But it would be fringed, obviously. And then I would do the next one, and then I would do the next one. Now, so you can do probably two more colors here, and then once you get to where you're doing his back, what you're gonna do is instead of going all the way, so you're, you're right here you've got this whole section is done and you just got his back. So what I would recommend is you change direction. So I did his whole back red because I went red, yellow, green, blue, pink, and then I was due for another layer of red. So I went around his neck, but to do his back, instead of going this way, I went this way. I did little strips. So I did like that. So glue a strip here and then I'm going to actually cut that so you can see. So I would glue that and then pretend this is fringed. I would overlap it and I would do another layer and I would go all the way up. And that's how you do the back. So you're going to have little strips going this way instead of the long way that you've done on the sides. And then once you get to, I did one little piece under his neck and then I did a second yellow one because that was kind of a tricky spot. And I did another yellow one going all the way around his head and then just same green and then the blue. And then for this top piece, I, instead of gluing it flat, which you could do one on the front and one on the back like that, I just opened it up like so is strangely hard to do once you've fringed it and oh because I accidentally got some glue on there and I just put a glue on that seam and then I just made him a little tissue sandwich like that for his ears and if you wanted to take some of your leftover white paper and cut two circles and color in black eyeballs and glue them on you could glue them on the front right here if you want him to have eyeballs, or if you have better yet, if you own googly eyes, that would be amazing. So hopefully this makes sense. It's actually really simple. It just takes forever to do. So I recommend cut all your fringe and just have strips of fringe laid out and figure out your color pattern of how you want to do it. And then remember you're going around the body like this, except for um, right here on just on the back. You're going to go little strips across and start at the bottom and work up because you're overlapping. It's going to be a lot harder to start at the top and go down because then you're having to go under to glue it. So that is it. I hope you all have a lovely Cinco de Seis. Eat some tacos and show off your awesome pinata. And I will see you the following week.